Hello friends, this is Chad Coffin, welcoming you to the River Church Telecast with Pastor Dale Berry. I'll be back at the end of the program to give you more information on the River Church in Knoxville. Now let's join Pastor Dale Berry. So let's talk about the stand. We're not going to be found, uh, you know, just falling for anything. We're going to stand on what the Word says. Look at Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 28. Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 28. We're going to read 18 through 20. 18 through 20. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And if you go away from here today and you want to know what's, what we're targeting, what we're chasing, I'll tell you a good ministry example you can look at. And you could go on the archives of YouTube and look at Rodney Howard Brown for the last 200 days probably and look at the stand. That's what they're doing. You say you pattern your, yourself after a man. I pattern myself after a man if, if, if I can follow him as he follows Christ. If the Lord's saying a certain thing to me and he's saying it to somebody else too, yeah, I can follow that. <laughs> Matter of fact, it's a good confirmation. Amen? And so I'm not idolizing Rodney Howard Brown because, frankly, when we went to hear him last year in Crossville, I went with dread of having regret. Not because of anything of Rodney. I just don't see too many people that start out in a direction and stay on track, even in ministry. You know what I'm saying? You just don't see much of that. So, uh, I, you know, I, I've learned, I went down, we went down to Crossville, several of us went, and Rodney was on the same page he'd been on for the last several years, doing exactly what God had said to do, and was building on that foundation. So, uh, yes, I love the River Church in Tampa Bay, uh, the River at Tampa Bay, amen. Matthew's Gospel 28, 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore... And teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. You say, well, Pastor, we know that scripture. You need to hear it today like you've never heard it. You need to act like the word just came to you for the first time. Amen. Because if you don't, the tendency for people is, oh, I've heard that before. You know, it's old hat. What did Jesus ever say that was old hat? <laughs> what has Jesus ever done that's not still alive today? What has Jesus ever said that he don't want you to still be able to hear and apply to your life today? He, all of it, it, it's that way. Amen? So what does it mean to stand? By definition, the definition of the word stand is to take up or maintain a specified position or posture. Take up or maintain a specified position or posture to maintain one's position. Did God give you a position to take in his word? Obviously he did, right? What's my position? My position is uh, whatever thus saith the Lord in his word. Amen? That's, that's my position. Well, what's your doctrinal statement? Well, we can lay out some things for you. That's our doctrinal statement. But basically, it's hear the word and do the word. Amen? You mean you take the Bible literally? Is there any other way to take it? <laughs> is there any other way to take God? Is he, is, is he joking when he said, uh, you know, uh, his word goes forth out of his mouth and don't return to him void? Is he kidding? No, he's not kidding, is he? Amen. So we know if God said it, if we're smart, that will settle it. Amen. And it'll come to pass. Amen. So to stand means to maintain one's position. To be in a particular state or situation. To hold a course at sea. To hold your course. So to stand is to determine what you're here for and stand on that and stand for that. Amen? Now just get this. Our assignment, this is a special note I wrote down. Our assignment determines our stand. Amen? You say, Pastor, I don't know my assignment. If God hadn't spoken to you your assignment, get you one of these right here. It's called a Holy Bible. And if you don't know your assignment, it's all in here. 
You say, well, yeah, I know, but that's 66 books. What am I going to do? You're going to start out in it, doing what you hear in it, and you're going to fulfill all of it by doing the Word. What? You mean I can just do what I know to do in the Bible and be called a doer of the Word by heaven? Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen. Because James said, you know, one that looks into a mirror looks into the Word. Let's just look at it, James. It's not in my notes, but it's really good. What chapter is that in? Is that in 1? Looking into the perfect law of liberty. Where's that at? Anybody know? James is a real small book. I know we'll find it. We have to read a few chapters. <laughs> Amen. Here it is, verse 22. It says, but be ye doers of the word. Chapter 1, verse 22, I'm sorry. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. So what's he talking about? He's saying, pick up the book and just do what you know to do after you look at the book. You say, well, there's, how, there's no way I can fulfill the 66 books. I promise you, if God tells you to bring all the tithe into the storehouse, he won't lead you astray on healing. Right. Amen? If God says, go into all the world and preach the gospel, he won't lead you astray on prosperity. If you're in the book and you're doing what you know to do right now, you're doing the whole book. I just don't understand that's possible, Pastor Dale. Well, you sure ain't going to be held accountable for what you don't know. If you're in the book, God's going to see to it that you know. Amen? He wouldn't make you accountable for what you don't know, but he's giving you 66 volumes here. So you do know. So be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So just like the guy that's not doing the word is deceived, the guy that's doing the word is his eyes are fully opened. Isn't that good? So, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass or a mirror. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner a man he was. Now watch this. But if any man is looking into a mirror, he sees who he is, and he goes away and don't forget who he was. He beholdeth himself and he goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. How come he does? Because he didn't do what he read. He didn't do what the Lord said. If you're always trying to find out how to do the Bible, you will always be hearing fresh words from heaven. You'll always be on the right track. You'll always be taking the right steps. I don't understand how that works, Pastor Dale. Well, listen. God's not simple, but he's made the message simple for us. He's not simple. He's complex, isn't he? I mean, you know, he's just, he really is. But he's made it a way where our relationship with him and our ability to relate with him is real easy. Isn't that right? It's as simple as this. While I was yet a sinner, Christ died. Well, what's simple about that? It's just as simple as this. I was on my way to hell. He sent Jesus for me. Now, why can't I just accept the simplicity of that? I can, can't I? Verse 25 says, But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, that's you, the doer, right? Did you do anything this morning yet that's in the Bible? Have you done anything today that was the Word? Acknowledge God, give an offering, worship God, go to church. Have you done, everybody in here has done at least gone to church. Have you at least done that? Everybody in here has done something that acknowledged what God said to do. Amen? Well, guess, here's you. Whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this man shall be what? Blessed in his deed. What's that mean, Pastor Dell? It means you're blessed wherever you go and whatever you do. Well, what if I go sin? You're not going to if you're on the path of being a doer of the work because God's going to direct your steps. You mean I'm going to have a chance to avoid it? That's exactly what I mean. And you know, so basically, you came to church this morning. That is every right to stand on the word. I'm a benefactor of a doer of the word. So when I go out here today, I'm fully expecting my steps to be ordered by the Lord. He promised they would be. Well, how do I know my steps are ordered? Well, are you here? You took a few steps to obey God in that, didn't you? Amen. Well, 
how do I know this is where he wants me? This is where he wants you unless he tells you something else. You know what I'm saying? You mean you're telling me I could go somewhere else? I'm telling you I don't get to make that choice. I hope you're here forever. But it's not my call. My call is to serve you well, feed you well, and let God do the rest. You See, J Jesus said this. He said, my sheep hear my voice. And another they won't follow. Well, how could I have the audacity, Pastor, to say that I hear God's voice? Just say it because he said it if you can't get it. If you struggle with that idea, just say it because God said it, because Jesus said it. You hear his voice. And we're living in days and times where you can't make it if you don't hear his voice. But watch the simplicity of how God set it up. Last week we preached on eternal affairs. And he showed us that he speaks in code. And you want to know some more of the code? I didn't share all the code with you last week. We talked about how that God speaks in, he speaks in parables. Jesus speaks in parables. And he said it's given to you to understand, but those that are on the outside, it's not given to them to understand. So guess what that means? That means you have understanding on the inside of you. Right. Hallelujah. You say, I know, but I don't understand that King James language. There's some other ones you can pick up and look at that will help you if you don't. But overall, when you got born again, you became a new creation in Christ. And, and the laws of God are written on the tablets of your heart. Basically, you need the book, but the nature of God is in you. And so you're already moving in that direction when you continue in the book. Does that make sense? I'm not suggesting you don't need the book now. Don't be a, don't be a fool. You need the book. Amen. You need the word of God because you'll get squirrely. Amen. And you might get back on track somewhere down the road, but you don't have to get squirrely at all. Just plain and simply do what you know to do right now. Amen. Amen. This is good stuff. That's not in my note. Praise God. Our assignment determines our stand. If we don't know what God's telling us we're supposed to do with our life, just get in the book and do what you see in the book. And once you know the direction God's leading you, don't lay the book down what a lot of people do I, you know I was seeking God earnestly and finally I figured out what the will of God was for my life I went on about doing it and you laid the Bible down you don't need the word of the Lord anymore the very way you got to where you can how many of you know that if you want to learn to hear God's voice just learn to hear this book because the voice that wrote this book is the voice of the spirit of God guess who that is that's the one leading and guiding you into all the truth What's all the truth? Everything in the book and everything that's right on the, along the way on the path that you're on. He's the one doing it. He's the one leading you. Right now, the person of the Godhead that you must get to know, on top of already knowing the Father and the Son, you must get to know the Holy Ghost. But watch this. He's made it very easy. Very easy. Last week after I ministered to you on et eternal affairs, um, uh, I got a, a call from a, a, a friend of mine this week, well, this weekend, and she was just unfolding some of what was on the inside of her, and I could just, just like the illustration I gave of the lady at the coffee place last week, how that she just began to talk about what the Lord's done in her life, how the presence of God began to fill that corner of the room. Oh, you must be deep, Pastor. And this ain't for deep people. This is for plain and simple Christians, and God takes you deep. That's who it's for. I'm just plain old, plain old Pastor Dale. You say, but you've been in meetings, Pastor, where the glory clouds manifested. You've seen this. You've seen that. That's why I'm here, to make sure you see it. I'm here to bring what he brought to me so that you get to have it. Amen. And so uh, she's talking, and I mean, just the anointing of God was all over her words. It had a depth to it and an accuracy and a clarity to it like I'm, I'm, I don't always hear. But I believe those days have changed. Remember last week I said I believe, I believe God has taken the church to another level. Why did we do all we did this last year? So we could get to this level when it came. Amen. Because we had to have what we needed. And I've got, a, I've got a little thing I posted on Facebook from David Wilkerson about the candlestick being removed in churches. It's, it, it's really strong, but it's really good for leaders. Just go back once in a while and just read that. Just, it just keeps you in check. Because people, I'm just telling you, I'm speaking to this because I, I am these people. 
people that understand the finished work, the temptation for them is not always to give up. It's to maybe get miss, get off track on the way to the finished work. So the devil's got to use what to get you off, you know. He's not going to tempt you with sin, probably in some areas that used to you struggled in, but now you got victory over. He's going to try to get you uh, maybe out of respect for the things of God or something, you know. Uh, you know I, I know the finished work. Uh, bless God. Well, you got to be arrogant about it, you know. I mean, before that, she's on your way to hell. And you just, you know, you just moved that far. God took you that far, but I mean, you know what I'm saying? You didn't do all that much to get where you are. God did it, didn't he? He did it, amen. So uh, uh, what, what happened is, since I ministered that last week, I've seen those instances and illustrations this week. And there's a clarity, guys. There's a clarity that hadn't been there. Look for it. Well, how come I didn't witness it last week? Maybe because nobody told you till now. But now you'll look for it. How come I don't get anybody saved? I don't know. Maybe because you walk out that door and look and you see people everywhere, but you're not looking on the fields that are white already to harvest with an expectation of touching somebody's life when you go. That's what we're about to change. Amen. Amen. So I, uh, that the, uh, I, I said I was going to tell you more about the code, didn't I? More about the code. The code, I shared last week, the code is he speaks in parables. Okay, another part of the code is there's another level of clarity. It's clear. Another level of the code for you to understand right now is God is not withholding anything from his people. Those that are right, the righteousness of God in Christ. He's releasing everything to us. He's not withholding anything. God, did, God called you to the kingdom for such a time as this, and then he decided not to tell you what weapons you needed. I don't think so, right? God called you to the kingdom for such a time as this, and he has empowered you to be the glorious church in this hour. He's coming back for a glorious church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. Now, why are they going to be glorious, and why are they going to be without spot, wrinkle, or blemish? Because they're going to tap into what Jesus did for them and stand on it even though they're imperfect. They're going to accept that he called them righteous even though they ain't done everything right. They're going to take Jesus as their personal Savior which cleanses them from all their sins even though they were a terrible sinner. They're going to receive the word of the Lord that says he's coming back for a glorious church which means a victorious, victorious, dominating, the forces of darkness, believer, and church. They're going to see that in the clarity that I'm talking about, and they're going to walk in that. You say, well, I haven't been saved but a year, Pastor Dale. It's not going to matter. God's going to grow people quickly. He's going to grow them supernaturally quickly. You know, I saw this on foreign soil when I went to Guatemala. We preached to 100 pastors, and over there, I mean, I didn't preach to 100 but there's a hundred over there. We preached to a lot of pastors from a lot of different uh, time frames and, and levels. But there were pastors. Some of them haven't been saved very long at all. And they're pastoring. Well, I believe you should get equipped. I believe you should too, but I'm not the one to make the call on what it takes to equip you. I'm not the one that gets to make the call on how soon he puts you in ministry. Or how far you go. How fast you go. How high you go. Irregardless of what it looks like compared to what I'm doing. It's not my call. Amen. But you know what? God will grow somebody up fast. There's, you know, there's some young people right now on YouTube that are just, I mean, they're millennials. And young people, young people that are just so on fire for God. And the word that they bring has got such a depth of the spirit on it, you know. And I'm thinking, where did they come from? I've never even heard that name. And they've got the cutting edge message that the whole church needs right now. Because that's what God's doing right now. Amen. You say, well, why don't he make my grandchildren grow at the speed I grew? Because if he does, they'll die in battle. <laughs> they got to have the weapons of their warfare. It's the same weapons you got, but it's enhanced. It's accelerated. Amen. Amen. So the code is clarity. Clarity. Except, just except in simplicity. I'm his sheep. I hear his voice. 
I don't follow no other. May not be great English, but you get the point. You know what I'm saying? It's that simple. You say, well, I just don't know. Just you, You'll see. You'll see. You'll be sitting at home. He'll say, get off the couch and go pray. And it'll be the first time you heard him talk to you like that. And you'll say, whoa. Then you'll go in there and pray. Some great big revelation or great big ordering step will come to you. And it'll radically change your life. You say, well, I'm Baptist. So am I. So what's that got to do with it? I saved in the Southern Baptist Church at the age of nine. That make me less or more saved? No. I'm bought by the blood of Jesus. He died for my sins, and I asked him to come in and be my Savior and Lord, take my sins away, and, and, and I gave him my life. He gave me his, I gave him mine. That's the only way it works. Amen. It's really not 50-50. It's 100 to 100. You know, it's really what it is. Our assignment determines our stand, okay? And the book is your first assignment. Once you get your steps ordered, you take the book everywhere you go on assignment. Amen? Could I have said that and then left all them rabbit trails off? Or did we? I guess we need them rabbit trails, didn't we? Amen. We cannot forget why we are here. Why are we here? Back to the commission we just read from Matthew 28, 18 through 20. All power, Jesus said, has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore. Now, here's one thing that we're, we're, our, we're assigned to do. Go. And then he says, and teach all nations. Teach. Baptizing them, baptize. Well, why we got to baptize? Because people need to make a change in their life. They need a change in their life. They really need to be water baptized. They need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Well, Pastor, I'm not sure where there'd be any Holy Ghost. Well, they weren't sure in the book of Acts either after they were really, really saved. They said, we know Jesus, we love Jesus, but we don't know where there'd be any Holy Ghost. Start reading in the book of Acts. You'll find out there's a Holy Ghost. Amen? You say, well, I, you know, I, do I need to be baptized to go to heaven? I, I, I'm not talking about do you need to be baptized to go to heaven. I'm trying to tell you, if you get the full revelation of what water baptism is, it will affect your walk with God and make you more free of sin. Not because the provision wasn't already there in the Word. It was. I'm just saying. It's like when you take communion. You take communion believing that there's healing in, in that. That there's cleansing in that blood or that cup. And there's healing in the broken body of Jesus. You take that and you make that a point of contact. That's what you do with water baptism if you know about it. Otherwise you just get wet maybe. <laughs> it's okay to get wet. Everybody needs a good bath once in a while, right? <laughs> It's okay to get wet. But why not find out what baptism is, baptism is about before you go into the water? It's identifying with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And the Bible says in the book of Romans, when you come out of that, it's symbolic of you walking in newness of life. But it's really more symbolic, more than symbolic. There's a transference of anointing for you to walk right in that baptism if you know about it. If you didn't know about it, I... I don't uh, not recommend you get baptized again if you want to. I'm not saying you didn't get anything. I'm just saying if you really feel like you needed to understand before you're baptized, you can get water baptized again if you want to. I mean, I haven't. I got baptized one time when I was nine years old. I didn't know everything, but, you know, I'm, I'm in the Word. I'm learning. Amen. So go, teach, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That, well, what do I go and not do and teach and what do I do? The next verse, verse 20 says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. What are you going to teach them? Everything you know. <laughs> what am I going to teach the people I witness to? Tell them everything you know. What, how do I witness to people? Tell them what the Lord has done for you. Don't I need the Roman road? You need to be in the book. And if you're in the book, when you open your mouth, it'll be filled. Amen. Amen. You mean I don't have to learn everything doctrinally before I go? I don't think, Jesus didn't do that. Once they signed up to follow, he said, go over in the upper room and wait. In a few days, you're going to be in due the power. Then you're going to go. You think they had time to get totally indoctrinated? I doubt it. Now, did he walk with them and teach them as he was? Yeah. But listen, if we wait till we got it all, we're not going. <laughs> Isn't it true? Because the fact of the matter is, 
at down here with you on full speed ahead with God, you still see through a glass darkly. You ain't going to see everything face to face until you get there. But yet, he still said, I've equipped you, go and teach them. Go and teach everything that I've taught you. Teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, lo means down here where we are. High means up there where he is, right? <laughs> lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. Are you telling me that the Lord is going to be with me on a great level even with all that's going on in the world? More so, if anything, at least as much. Amen. Key word in our stand. Key words in our stand. There's three key words in our stand, okay? Go, fight, and take. Now, why do I go first? Because you ain't even started until you get up off the couch. So get off your chair in a few minutes here and get out there and get the job done. Well, I'm just intimidated about talking to people. You ain't intimidated talking to them about the balls. Amen. Well, why can't you talk about your champion Jesus? Because I don't know that much about him. What has he done for you? That's all you need. It wouldn't hurt to be in the book so that he can bring scriptures to your remembrance by supernatural recall when you talk to him. And it wouldn't hurt to have a few scriptures lined up if you can get it. But don't let the devil talk you out of going because you don't know the whole book. Neither did the first ones he sent. Amen. They went with what they knew. Amen. Listen, these guys, before they got told to mature, somebody, it didn't go the way they wanted it to go, he, they called down fire on them. Kill them, God! <laughs> you know? That's just the level of maturity they had. That is not God. Right? <laughs> so three key words, go, fight, and take. One, go into all the world. We just read those scriptures in Matthew 28. We don't have to read them again. We read them twice. Number two, fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith, 1 Timothy 6, 12. The third one, take. Take dominion. Thank you for joining us today on the River Church program. We hope you can join us soon in one of our services. The River Church meets every Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. We are located at 6716 Central Avenue Pike, at Callahan Drive in Knoxville, Tennessee. On behalf of Pastor Dale Berry and the River Church, I'm Chad Coffin. Abide.